Registered Phenomena Code 543 Object Class Alpha Purple Hazard Types Sapient Hazard Organic Hazard Aggression Hazard Grouped Hazard Extra-Dimensional Hazard Sensory Hazard Visual Hazard Containment Protocols All instances of RPC-543 currently in containment, a total of 1,000 individuals, are preserved on movable shelves in the Cold Storage Wing of OL Site-543, New Swabia Rift Defense Command Headquarters. Each instance of RPC-543 is connected to an electroencephalograph system, which measures their brain activity. A series of electrodes placed against the scalp, which measure electrical activity in the brain. The cold storage wing is monitored and maintained entirely by remote. In the event that direct physical repairs or maintenance is required in the facility, personnel are to be equipped with, at minimum, Type II antimimetic filtering equipment, as well as ear protection rated to 110 decibels. In the event that any instance of RPC-543 demonstrates the neurological signs of increased wakefulness or consciousness, the entire cold storage wing of OL Site-543 will be flooded with VX nerve agent at concentrations sufficient to kill all instances of RPC-543. The OL Site will then be placed on high alert, and Authority War Plan Overflow will be activated. The Authority Wide Readiness Plan which assumes the sudden resumption of hostility with Haller forces. For further information on overflow and other comparable emergency authority-wide protocols, contact your site or facility's protection division lead. Description: RPC-543 is the designation for 1,000 anomalous humanoids, colloquially identified as Howlers, captured by authority military forces between January of 1939 and 19. RPC-543 are anatomically comparable to human beings, with the exception of slight structural differences in the skeletal structure of the neck and upper torso, a heart with a single ventricle, and greatly enlarged vocal cords. The jaw, tongue, and palate structure of RPC-543 allows them to produce a far greater range of vocalized frequencies and pure tones than humans and they are naturally capable of simultaneously vocalizing overtones. All currently contained RPC-543 instances, as well as all instances killed in combat, have it anatomically female. Testing following their initial capture and partial containment revealed that RPC-543 instances, when conscious, exhibit greatly reduced sensitivity to pain and extremes of temperatures, as well as little need for sleep. RPC-543 are omnivorous, and have comparable dietary and hydration needs to humans. When conscious, RPC-543 instances are a visual cognito hazard which induces intense visual hallucinations and seizure-like symptoms in those exposed. While these effects are generally not lethal, severe secondary injuries such as broken bones and aspiration of saliva can result. Unfiltered photographs or film of RPC-543 produce similar effects. It is unclear if digital recordings of RPC-543 produce cognitohazardous effects, as they cease to have an active anomalous visual component long before the invention of such technologies. Viewing RPC-543 through mirrors or lenses do not trigger harmful anomalous effects, though reports and photographs consistently indicate a mild visual hallucination in which the silhouette of RPC-543 appears unusually bright, unusually dark, or perspectively misaligned with the background. Eyewitness reports have described this effect as parts of RPC-543 appearing closer or further away than they actually are, and constantly seeming the shift in relative distance from the viewer. RPC-543 are sapient, and demonstrate levels of intelligence comparable to human beings as well as a complex spoken and written language, which has not yet been successfully translated to any degree. Due to the unusual structure of RPC-543's vocal cords, their speech and vocalizations include tones which cause resonant vibration in the bone structure of the human ear. 
Prolonged exposure to RPC-543 speech causes dizziness and an intense roaring or rushing sensation in the ear, followed by hearing damage due to structural stress on the mechanical components of the ear. This effect, combined with the large size of the RPC-543 mouth, is generally accepted as the origin of the name Howler. It remains unclear if RPC-543's anomalous effects are due to some form of as-yet undiscovered personal technology or natural biology. RPC-543 originate from the extra-dimensional space which exists on the outer side of the New Swabia Rift, a spatial anomaly located in the Schirmacher Oasis, Queen Maudland, Antarctica. As the area on the other side of the rift has an ACS value of 4.6, RPC-543's abilities have been theorized to be a natural extension of a more real reality overlapping with a less real one. A reality which makes our own feel dreamlike or surreal by comparison. For further details on RPC-543 anatomy, as well as a comparative analysis of different theories about RPC-543 technology and society, see Kleisman and Roche, a multidisciplinary study of RPC-543. 6th edition Authority Research Division Press, 2002. All instances of RPC-543 have been in a comatose state since 2.35 a.m. on 1940. They are non-responsive to any form of external stimuli, breathe at a rate of approximately 0.2 breaths per minute, exhibit a heart rate consistently lower than 8 beats per minute, and do not appear to require solid or liquid sustenance in any form. The anatomical origins of this biological homeostasis are unclear, as RPC-543 lack any biological or anatomical mechanism for hibernation. In light of the prolonged period of time during which they were studied while conscious during the Austral War, and the current material cost of containing RPC-543, all testing on individual instances is currently suspended. Addendum. Recovered RPC-543 New Technology RPC-543 instances make substantial use of an as-yet poorly understood form of highly applied memetics, designated New Technology. This paradigm of technological development appears to revolve around the use of abstract concepts which, when processed by the mind, generate persistent physical changes in the local structure of New Craft Persistent violation of defies reverse engineering, with the exception of 1982 Considerable casualties among test personnel Permanent access to Dreamland Misinformation is classified level 4B by order of authority central intelligence Permission for his ear kit to our application of new technologies is granted on a case-by-case -case basis by unanimous agreement from the global directorate. Unlawful pursuit of such ventures is ground for permanent dismissal and amnestization. Original RPC-543 Documentation Database Entry Introduction the following is a digitized transcript of the original containment documentation for RPC-543, created on April 27, 1939. The formatting has been preserved to be consistent with RPC archival documents of this period. In the interest of completeness, original punch card database system codes have been preserved. Where useful, contextual explanations have been included. Registered Phenomena Code 543 Informal Designate Howlers Object Risk Red Containment Degree Severe Equivalent to the modern Gamma Rating Primary Hazard Vision-Induced Injury The study of memetics was still in its infancy in this period, and there was little distinction between memetic and impohazardous effects. Secondary Hazard Sapient Aggressive. The hazard system at this time further subclassified sapiens by the degree of physical and psychological resistance to containment offered by the anomaly. Tertiary hazard. Spatial. Extracontextual. 
An extra contextual anomaly here referred to a spatial or dimensional hazard originating from alternate or pocket universes. Number contained 178 Reporting Personnel Dr. Joseph Hafner Containment Systems The team has had great success containing RPC-543 individuals, captured by security teams, in any standard man-proof holding chamber. We have been using binoculars, shaving mirrors, telescopes, even prisms, anything with a refractive or reflective effect, to avoid having to look at them directly. The guard staff have begun soundproofing the containment cells with whatever spare cloth or insulation they can find. In a pinch, cotton balls in the ears work passively. Unfortunately, a few of the guard and research personnel involved in the earliest containment, especially the Germans, got a full dose of whatever visual anomaly the 543s are putting out. We had to put down a few who would not stop seizing, poor devils. Standard prisoner rations suffice to feed RPC-543. We have been keeping their water and food supplies low. It keeps them docile, makes them less likely to fight back when we need them for testing. We have enough instances of containment already that we have instituted a shoot-on-sight policy for any found attempting to escape. Regrettably, it does not seem to have any instructive effect on those still left alive. Pacification Systems RPC-543 can be killed by any means which would fatally injure a man. That being said, the difficulty of observing them directly makes aimed gunfire or physical strikes ineffective. A combination of incapacitating gas, they seem just as vulnerable to nitrogen inhalation as we are, followed by flamethrowers, when they are unconscious and their resistance is down, has proven successful. Explosives generally work well but present obvious practical difficulties. Our applied Reotronics team has had promising results with atomic radiation. A form of primitive particle acceleration technology, then under testing by the Authority as a gamma-ray based directed energy weapon. We will continue to provide updates as the situation develops. Pacification Note All of the RPC-543 entities currently in containment are biologically female. Any inappropriate or unnecessary social behavior on the part of staff will be punished according to standard authority rules of conduct. Research staff appreciate that none of us has had much contact with a woman since the start of the expedition, but my god, they're not human. They attacked us first, gentlemen. They are not our friends. Object Description for a detailed description of the physiological and anatomical characteristics of RPC-543, see the attached medical log. We have conducted thorough observational analysis, as thorough as is possible given their visual effects. Vivisection and dissection have yielded more concrete results. Whatever visual effects these things generate come from the outer surface of their skin. Howler intestines are just as non-anomalous as ours. We have yet to overcome their extreme resistance to pain. It is unclear if the source is psychological or physiological. They starve and dehydrate at comparable rates to human beings, and they can be asphyxiated, at the very least. They also have a notable vulnerability to atomic radiation. Gamma radiation that causes no noticeable harm to a man will induce the equivalent of third-degree burns in RPC-543. Behavior Characteristics RPC-543 are human in their behavior. When the Germans first opened the rift, they massacred the entire research team, as far as we can tell, but did not touch the Funk Mesgrid they had installed. Literally radio-measuring device, an experimental radar system which the members of the new Swabia expedition used to open the rift. They can operate in groups, delegate tasks, and have a solid understanding of battlefield tactics. That much the security team can confirm. We have theorized that they do not understand the concept of physical technology. They will coordinate to get within range of a machine gun nest, then kill the gunner with their bare hands, but leave the gun and the ammunition intact. I do not believe they are capable of fear. They must have some kind of society. There is an obvious degree of social hierarchy among the individuals captured. 
We have had no success understanding them, or getting to understand us. They do not wear clothing, and seem confused by simple and elementary items like cutlery, doorknobs, even furniture. At first we provided their cells with beds and chairs, but they were totally unaware how to use them. Some of them have obviously picked up the habit of using chairs after observing our test personnel. They can learn, at the very least. They have, universally, been hostile to us. We have tried communication via every language spoken by the team, as well as a variety of pictograms, sign languages, and even basic miming, to no avail. They do not go armed, but they have inflicted significant losses on the security team. And as far as we can tell, more are coming out of the rift every day. This does not feel like we have kicked the nest of some extra-spatial animal. This is organized and violent resistance. This might, God help us, be war. Addendum: Exploration of New Swabia Rift During a lull in the fighting on the 26th of February, one of the security teams walked down to the bottom of the Oasis lake bed. The water drained out of it when the rift was opened, and tried to cross over to whatever extra contextual space is on the other side. From what the eyewitnesses have told us, they were only over there for 10, maybe 15 seconds. Attached below is a transcript excerpted from an interview with Hauptmann Gerald Fuchs, who saw the men return. Note that Herr Fuchs is a veteran of the Great War, has seen extended combat with the German Freikorps, and is one of the few surviving members of the German team who has not yet succumbed to the effects of RPC-543. They left the hole at the bottom of the lake bed at maybe 4, 5 in the morning. At first, all we saw was blinding light and color, and then… Tears. Yes, the singing of… Perfect beauty and light and… Truth does exist. The light. And out of… We… Into dust. And then, at this, I will never forget, they all… You have to let us go. Dreamland Memorandum from the Global Directorate on RPC-543 Operations The Austral War is long over. If you've opened this file seeking some insight into the Howlers, into who they were, or why they fought, you will not find it here. All relevant pieces of documentation on the Austral War, the various ethical and unethical studies of Howler behavior, anatomy, and society are declassified, and in various authority libraries. There is no great conclusion to be drawn from the war, or from our enemies, or even from their technologies. Move on. For the sake of your soul, if nothing else, do not dream of Dreamland, please. A dream of victory on the barren ice. A dream in which you conquered us. A dream of inhumanity and sorrow. A dream of bile and vivisection. A dream of war and conquest. A dream you try to justify. A dream you try to forget. Your dream, not ours. We will wake up, and the truth of our kingdom will devour the fantasy you call existence.